Hello everyone! Welcome back to story time. So today we are going to be reading The Trees of the Dancing Goats and it is by Patricia Polacco. So the artwork might look a little bit familiar. She's done some other things such as my rotten red-headed uh, older brother and Babushka's doll. But today we're reading The Trees of the Dancing Goats. And as you could tell, so yesterday during Toddler Tales, we read a different book about Hanukkah. It was Smell the Hanukkah Elf. So this probably has something to do with the holidays, because I see a tree and I see a menorah. So I guess we're going to learn about both, maybe. At our farm outside of Union City, Michigan, we didn't celebrate the same holidays as most of our neighbors but we shared their delight and anticipation of them just the same. Such cold the winter brings, my babushka said as she looked out our front window. My bones, it makes to ache. She slapped her chest, then she caught my eye and winked. She wasn't fooling me. I knew how much she loved the snow. It reminded her of her homeland in the Ukraine. Carla, again you complain, but still you watch the snow with such light in your eyes, Grandpa said and he threw her a kiss. My grandfather was from Soviet Georgia, way to the south of Russia. He and Babushka spoke Russian and had wonderful accents. They kept their homelands in their hearts, even though they would never be permitted to return. Just then, Mama rolled into the long driveway. Mama's home, Mama's home, my brother Richard called as we watched her get out of the car. Mama drove over to Battle Creek every day to teach school. But now she would be off for two weeks because of the holiday season. I loved having her home for winter vacation. This year we would have a week together to prepare, then eight days of Hanukkah festivities. So I guess eight days is how long Hanukkah lasts. The next day, Mama took out our old tarnished menorah and asked me to polish it. While I rubbed, I watched my grandmother make the candles that we would put in. Babushka, babushka tied long strings to a metal rod and dipped them into a pot of melted beeswax that she kept on the stove. Then she hung the wax-covered strings on the wall to dry before dipping them again to add another layer of wax. She hummed as she dipped, never seeming to tire of the long process. So that's the candles and there's the beeswax. And then she's polishing. Grandpa prepared our festival of lights as well. He carved small toys out of wood. Richard and I weren't supposed to know that he was making them for us. But he did every year. And that afternoon, when he went to town, we couldn't help sneaking into his work room to take a peek. Look, a dancing goat, my brother exclaimed as he held one up. I like this one, I said, cradling a little dog in my palm. Grandpa had painted the animals with colors from his homeland. We marveled at all at how magical they all were. Do you think he made enough for all eight days of Hanukkah, Richard asked, as he eyed the array of wooden figures. You know he has, I whispered. I took one lasting look, knowing that soon Grandpa would wrap them up in colored paper. My mother called for me, and I thought she had caught us spying, but she only wanted me to go over to the Kremls for some cornmeal. The Kremls, our nearest neighbor, lived half a mile down the road. They were farmers, like us, and at harvest time Mr. Kremel always helped Grandpa. All the neighbors helped each other that way. Friendship means something, Grandpa always said, especially for those who tilled the soil. I practically lived at the Kremel's house because Cherry Kremel was my very best friend. We especially loved the holiday season when I'd watch her family decorate their Christmas tree and she'd watch my family light our menorah. I knew as we were bustling in anticipation of the festival of lights at our house, the criminals would be preparing for the arrival of Christmas at theirs. But when I got there, I found everybody quite sick. Even Cherry, who was usually full of spitzering ink toe, as my babushka would say, seemed quiet and weak. Sorry for the mispronunciation, guys. 
She was crying. I hope Santa will remember where we live, she wailed. Well, why wouldn't he? I asked. Because we haven't put up a tree this year, or even decorated. Papa's too sick to get out of bed and go chop one down. Then she coughed an awful cough. Ooh, she looks like she does not feel good. And it looks like her friend is a little worried. I ran home and burst into our house with the news about Cherry and her family. Mama seemed very worried. Did you go inside their house, Trisha? She asked me. Sure, I answered. Uh-oh, my brother said. They all looked at each other. When your grandfather was in town today, Babushka said very slowly, Dr. Leach told him that many families around here have come down with scarlet fever. The Kremls must have it. And I sent you there, my mother said as she rushed me to the bathroom, pulled off my clothes, and soundly scrubbed every inch of me. Am I going to get it, Mama? I asked. It's very contagious, she answered. We'll know in a few days. Am I going to die? I asked, starting to cry. No, baby, Mama said softly as she held me close. But if you have it, it will make you quite sick. For the next few days, my family watched me carefully. Richard, of course, took pleasure in making me feel like I was quarantined. He held a cloth over his mouth and nose every time he came near me. Then he'd hack and gag, mimicking the dreadful cough of the fever. As the days passed, it was evident that I was not going to get sick. But more and more reports came to us of neighbors falling ill. The Everests, the Govluks, the Tundervolts, and the Moleskis. It was an epidemic. We were all worried about our friends. But Babushka was determined that our festival of lights would go on as planned. On the afternoon before Hanukkah, she bustled around her kitchen. Such latkes I'll make this year, she exclaimed, while digging for the choicest potatoes in the bin. She hummed happily as she placed the potatoes in front of me. I shredded them with great care. They had to be just right for my babushka's latkes. Mama and babushka dressed down two chickens for roasting and put them in the oven. Now, you guys might know some of these words. Epidemic and um, quarantine. We've heard those a lot this year. So this was a different illness that people used to get a lot. You don't, you don't get it so much now. But an epidemic means that it's a sickness that goes everywhere. And quarantine is, you know, like last year whenever we couldn't go to school and everybody had to stay home pretty much unless you were getting groceries or food or something. That, that's what it means to be quarantined. You stay in one place and away from other people. All right, so they were getting their dinner ready. Just as the aroma of the wonderful feast met our nostrils, the sun set, and it was time to light the menorah. Grandpa recited the blessings and lit the shomos, the candle used to light all the others. Babushka put the first candle in the menorah and lit it with the shamas. Then Mama told the story, as she did every year, of our people long ago. Tonight we are celebrating miracles, she started. The miracle that a very small band of Jewish farmers turned soldiers could defeat a huge Syrian army. Were they really farmers before they were soldiers, Richard asked? Simple farmers, Grandpa answered, just like us. They were fighting so that they could worship in their own way, my mother added. Then there was the miracle of the light, my grandfather said with a twinkle in his eye when little tiny drop of oil burned in the temple for eight days. Such a miracle, my babushka explained, exclaimed. Miracles can happen even today, Grandpa said quietly. After dinner, Grandpa handed us the first of our beautifully wrapped presents. He looked troubled, though. You know, he began, our neighbors are having such a hard time, and this should be a time of gladness for them. If only we could do something to make their holiday special. His voice trailed off. Babushka thought for a while. They always bring a tree into their house. Only in America does a, does a tree grow right out of the living room floor, she rocked with laughter. 
Carla, we should cut down trees and take them into their houses, Grandpa announced. Babushka smiled in agreement. I'll cut them tonight. You can help, Richard, Grandpa said, already pulling on his winter coat. We can dress down more chickens and take them food, Babushka said as she hurried into, scurried into the kitchen. Mama and I can decorate the trees, I shouted excitedly. But this is not our custom. We have nothing to decorate the trees with, my grandmother said. What about the carvings, my mother said softly. They both looked at me. What do you think? They have no way of making their children happy this year. At first, I was a little disappointed. But then, as I thought about it, I knew it was the right thing to do. Our neighbors needed cheering, and we were just the only just about the only ones who didn't have the fever. Grandpa and Richard brought the cut trees into our living room. They nailed boards onto the bottom of each one so they would stand up. They were very small trees. Grandpa had only taken the tops of, off our evergreens, but they were beautiful. And when they were all standing in the living room, it looked like a forest. Like the woods just outside of Kiev when I was a little girl, Babushka said breathlessly. Grandpa started hanging some of his wooden animals on the branches of a tree. A dancing goat, my babushka remarked as she looked closely at one of them. We shall call these the trees of the dancing goats. We made sure to hang a dancing goat on each and every tree. So there's the dancing goats and all the little trees that they're decorating. And it looks like their mom is working in the background getting all the food ready. As we decorated the trinks, we sang and laughed. The single candle in the menorah flickered as we brushed past it to reach another carved animal or to paste together paper chains to hang on the trees. We worked, we all worked into the night. While Grandpa, Richard, and I finished the decorating, Babushka, Mama, and Mama roasted more chickens and fried more potato latkes. They packed the food in baskets and each one and in each one, Babushka put one of her homemade Hanukkah candles, so they will have the light of God in their hearts, and so that God will protect them and make them well again, she murmured. We loaded Grandpa's old Ford with trees and the food baskets, and sent Babushka and Grandpa into the early light of dawn with their Christmas cheer. Just like Santa, my brother said. Mr. and Mrs. Santa, I added. We waited eagerly for their return later that morning. We were thrilled when Babushka and Grandpa told of how they entered the home of each neighbor, set up a tree in the living room, and put the basket of food on the table, and then put a candle in the holder for them to light later. Mama was a little worried that they had been exposed to the fever, but Babushka said, And so much worse I've been, you, you shouldn't know from. God will protect, God will protect. This, I know. A week later, the eight days of Hanukkah had come and gone, and we sat down to have our last feast. There was a knock at the door. Now who could that be, Babushka said as she scurried to the door with her usual warm smile. It was the Kremels, Cherry and her mom and dad. They looked pale, but assured us that they were quite well now. We have something for you, Cherry announced as she bolted through the door, holding a basket. Her mother and father had tears in their eyes as they hugged my grandparents and my mother. Look what my dad made for you, Cherry said. She pulled out a menorah that Mr. Crimmel had carved out of wood. On it, he had mounted some of the animals that we had given to them. So you can see all the little painted animals. And there's holes behind them where you can put the candles. beautiful, my babushka said as she placed it on our table. Come sit, Grandpa invited them. You are so welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, George, Mr. Kremel said, looking into Grandpa's eyes. They sat down and shared our feast. By this time, our menorah had been lit for an hour or so, and when we lit the candles in the new menorah, we noticed something, something wondrous. Look, I called. Our old candles are exactly as tall as the new ones. The old ones don't even look burned down, Mama said softly. Another miracle, Grandpa said. Miracle indeed, my babushka said, giving me a big hug. 
Then we all got up and danced and laughed together in the flickering candlelights. Our neighbors all recovered from that terrible fever. Few were left with any permanent damage. What they were left with was a long-cherished memory of that Christmas when Santa really did come. And my family, too, has never forgotten the incredible winter of the fever, the miracle of true friendship, and the trees of the dancing goats. So this is by Patricia Palaco. So if you found that that you like this book, you can come and check it out. I really liked that it showed us their traditions and that you got to see um, them helping their neighbors in a really bad time. So, thank you guys for listening to Storytime today. I hope I'll see you either Tuesday for Toddler Tales or next Wednesday for another Storytime. Bye, guys!